Okay, here we're going to take a brief overview of the phylum Mollusca. Found kind of a cool image here of a greater blue ringed octopus and a snail. Both are classified under this particular phylum. So to start off with, um, these mollusks are coelomates and they have a soft body and it's comprised of three regions. We have a head foot region, visceral mass containing the body's organs, and then a mantle which envelops the visceral mass and is associated with gills that capture oxygen from water and release carbon dioxide. So it's kind of the way that they breathe. Now looking at that head foot region, we have the foot region of looking in this case of the snail and the head region located here. Visceral mass is that main area containing all the organs and that mantle here indicated in blue here is that area that's allowing that gas exchange between oxygen and carbon dioxide. So uh, there's three main groups of mollusks. There's the gastropods, which are your snails and slugs that you may be most familiar with, bivalves with clams, oysters, and scallops, and cephalopods are your octopus and your squid. These are all classified under the same phylum. A little bit uh, more of a detailed look here, as we can see over here, all of the different um, types. The snail, the gastropods, we have a little bit of description there. Our clams, you can see our nice kind of it's partially open here, bivalve, contains two shells, that's where we've got two valves, that's where the bivalve comes from. Cephalopods, such as the octopus, um, they can release ink when they're um, trying to escape from predators, um, and they have ways to propel themselves. Also, uh, very smart animals here, um, a large brain of considering their um, relative body size. And if you've ever seen videos on them, they can figure quite a bit of complex problems and puzzles out, which is quite interesting. Now, looking at the addition here, uh, our snail, for example, has this radula, which is a feeding structure. Now, this is a very unique structure. It's a rasping tongue-like organ that has rows of pointed backward curving teeth. We look at it here, and it's like, ah, oh, this is kind of a little bit of a rough region. When we look at it very specifically and close up in our microscope, we see how aggressive this can be. Um, this backward kind of rows of curved teeth here. And this is how the animal feeds. It doesn't have true teeth, but this backward facing allows food to come in easier, and it, has it creates a much harder time for it to exit. It would get caught here, and allows it to be worked into the organism for digestion. The basic body plan, you can see here. Again, there's not so much going on here that we need to kind of worry about and know, at least for purposes of this class. But we may be doing dissections of animals within this phylum. So this might be a good area to kind of come back and refer to. You just have kind of a general idea of how this body system compares to some others that I talked about in other videos. Lastly here are coelomates. They have an outer surface of the mantle that secretes a protective shell. Where not every um, coelomate, let's go back for one moment, um, several of the species here have, can, have no longer have shells, but many do. So again, it's not a distinguishing fe feature. But those that do have shells on the outer surface, um, it acts as protection. And there's multiple layers, and it's comprised of protein, calcium, and pearl. That's why if you've ever opened, in this case, a clam, it's kind of got that nice shiny pearl-like look. That's because it is composed of some pearl substance. There's many species in various forms. This is an illustration that shows the, ana the anatomy of an aquatic gastropod. So again, this is just one example of this very diverse phylum.